Bruchem Aboim, welcome to our home. Again, thank you for attending. Um, before I begin, let me just say I do have a cold, and I hope I don't uh, cause you too much grief clearing my throat or anything. But uh, again, I know when I listen, I'm not happy about it. But again, I didn't want to miss the lecture. Uh, there will not be a musical portion after this tape. Again, based on that, I'd like to be able to sing the songs with the best voice that I have. So, again, you'll excuse me, and uh, again, God will hopefully give me a complete refuge lane. We'll do it next week. So, this week, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine the concept of wisdom. You know, it would seem that we define its meaning in different ways. Now, Wikipedia defines wisdom as the ability to contemplate and act productively using knowledge, understanding, common sense, and insight. The Webster Dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise, uh, such as what you might say, listen to his, to his words of wisdom. It is also viewed as the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. For example, some question the wisdom of the building of a dam so close to an active volcano. It can also be defined as the body of knowledge and principles that develops within a specified society or period. An example of this might be the traditional farming wisdom of India. You know, wisdom is an essential tool for all of us to navigate the challenges of life. You know, there's a cute anecdote about an elderly sage who was learning with one of his students. They looked up and standing in front of them was an angel of God. The angel said to the elderly sage, God has witnessed your dedication and commitment to him and also your strict observance of all of his commandments. <clears throat> he has therefore sent me to offer you a choice of three blessings. You can choose either wealth, wisdom, or long life. So the angel, angel said to the sage, which do you choose? The sage thought for a moment, then he replied, I choose wisdom. The angel nodded and said, so, it sh so shall it be. And then he disappeared. Well, the student was silent during this whole episode, totally in awe. He turned to the elderly sage and he said, now that you've been blessed with great wisdom, what words of wisdom can you tell me? The sage turned to the young student and answered, I should have taken the money. <laughs> wisdom is not something that you purchase at a store or, or online. It is a gift that one attains with years. You know, there's a saying that no <clears throat> wise man ever wished to be younger. Age, aging is not a curse. It is a journey of wisdom, experience, and growth. And just like any journey, it is more enjoyable when you are fit and healthy. As I've mentioned many times in my lectures, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. If one were to take an intelligent young man in his 20s and a simple-minded man, an older person in their 60s, <clears throat> in some ways, the elderly person, even though they are simple, <clears throat> would still have knowledge of things that the younger intelligent person would have no idea about. Experience? Well, experience is the greatest teacher in life. Wisdom is more than just living lo longer and experiencing more. It is being able to view the past as a instruction manual. You know, once you placed your hand into a fire and got burnt, the chances are you'll never do it again. Every action that we perform in life should teach us something. Even things that are painful and some that seem irrelevant at the moment may well become very relevant. The Webster Dictionary states that the word wise is used in reference to a person having or showing experience knowledge and good judgment. So an example of that would be, she seems kind and wise or a wise precaution. It is also seen as responding sensibly or shrewdly to a particular situation. An example of that would be, it would be wise to discuss the matter with the chairman of the committee. When can also be wise meaning knowledgeable in a specific subject such as those wise in the ways of hurricane survival. It can also be an indication or informal alert to, or being aware of, such as fortunately, 
I was already wise to the approach used in the scam. So acquiring wisdom and then using the trait wisely, being wise, is a true challenge of life. Doing what we know we should do versus what we actually do are many times not the same. Thought versus action. We need to use our wisdom to set up safeguards to overcome our tendencies to choose procrastination over alacrity, pleasure over productivity, and theory <clears throat> over experience. We need to cultivate discipline, focusing on what we have to do, not what we want to do. Hopefully, by following this path, the time will come when what you have to do will be exactly what you want to do. The wisdom of being able to separate the chaff from the wheat. The wisdom to be able to make the right decision, not necessarily the convenient one. So how does Judaism perceive wisdom? <clears throat> The Rambam, Maimonides, in his Mishnah Torah, in the laws of the fundamentals of Torah, states that the foundation of foundations and the pillar of all wisdom is to know that there is a primary existence who has brought every existence into being, all that exists in the heavens, on the earth, and what is between them, came into existence only from the truth of his existence. You know, King David Devil Milk stated in Psalm 111, verse 10, Reish is The beginning of wisdom is awe of God. Everything. Everything in life goes back to God and His ultimate wisdom. It is stated that God and His Torah are one. So when we study the words of Torah, it's more than just an intellectual exercise. We are, in essence, internalizing the wisdom of God Almighty Himself. The psalm continues, Sechel Tov L'chol Oseham. The understanding of what is good is given to each one of those that practice them. Meaning, that the understanding of the wisdom that God Almighty reveals in this world is available to anyone and everyone. There is only one condition. You have to exert yourself. This is a world of action. As it states in the Talmud and the Tractate of Megillah, 6b, it's, if someone tells you, I've labored in the study of Torah, but I did not succeed, do not believe him. If he tells you, I have not labored in the study of Torah, and yet I have succeeded, again, do not believe him. If, however, he tells you, I have labored in the study of Torah, and I have succeeded, then you may believe him. Wisdom comes from the understanding that in order to succeed, one must labor. However, that is only true with Torah. The Talmud goes on to say this fact is only true in connection to Torah study. However, with regard to business, one's success in business is dependent on si'ata deshmaya, the assistance of heaven. All that we contribute is the effort. You know, the last word mentioned in the book of Genesis that relates to the creation of the world is la'asot which translates to mean to do. Wisdom is acquired with action. You can't just <clears throat> be a spectator and expect to grow from all the wisdom in the world. You must get on the field and be a player. Then you are in a position to attain true and lasting wisdom. Again, action. We find in the language of the sages where they refer to a Torah scholar as a Talmud Chacham which means a student of wisdom or a wise student. One can never separate the word student from the word wise. The moment that a person stops thinking of themselves as a student, well, they can no longer be called wise. This may be one of the reasons that all the volumes of the Talmud begin on page Bays, page two. No page Aleph, page one. Strange. This is to inform the scholar that no matter how much they have attained in their learning of the Torah, they have yet to understand the Aleph, He who began it all, the primordial leader, God Almighty Himself. In chapter 2 of Pirkei Avot, The Ethics of the Father, Rabbi Yochanan Mazakai asked his five illustrious students what they perceived as the greatest trait that a person can attain. Rabbi Shimon replied, Haroa Esanova, one who considers the consequences of their actions. Now, the Hebrew word noled is past tense. 
So what Rabbi Shimon is really telling us, in, that in essence, is that the way for a person to prepare for the future is by first looking into their past, past experience. However, I think there is another type of wisdom. According to Kabbalah, according to mysticism, the three intellectual traits that God Almighty has taken upon himself when he created this world were Chachma, Bina, and Das, which are wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. You know, the Hebrew word for wisdom is Chachma. This word can be broken up into two separate words. Koachma, a seminal flash. When you experience a novel idea, did you ever wonder, where did it come from? When you compose a song, where does the inspiration for the words and the music originate? It's not like you can walk into a Walmart or a Lowe's and go to the aisle lab labeled Novel Ideas and Creations. I believe <clears throat> that the seminal flash that we receive is a gift <clears throat> from a benevolent Father in Heaven. To better understand the concept, I compare it to a game of football. Now, imagine that God is the quarterback. He has the ball, chokmah, wisdom, in his possession. You are the wide receiver. He throws you the ball. Well, and you catch the ball. That is bina, understanding. Then you clutch the ball and you advance it forward, gaining yardage, maybe even scoring. That is das, knowledge. So the term that I mentioned earlier about wisdom from the psalm, Rashi's chokmah, the beginning of wisdom, so to speak, is the ball that God possesses. It is his hope and aspiration that we not only catch the ball, Bina, but that we take that understanding and develop it further, using it to advance new and better ideas both in Torah and in life, Das. God encourages us <clears throat> to use the brain that he gave us to acquire more understanding of the world that we live in. That will hopefully help us to gain even more appreciation for the creator of all the mysteries that we uncover. You know, in addition, God wants us to use the, our intellect to be a partner with him in creation. We do so by making the world a better place to live. We are told by our sages that Adam, Adam Arishon, first man, did not experience darkness until the sun set on Saturday night. That was when God Almighty showed him how to create fire by rubbing two stones together. He was also shamed by God how to crossbreed a horse with a donkey to create a mule. Now, one has to wonder, why did God choose these two things to teach Adam? Fire is connected to the beginning of creation, when God created light, Vayihi Or. The mule is connected to the end of creation, when God created animals shortly before he created man. We also observe that when the men of the great assembly of the Anshus Nessus Agdola instituted that Jews should pray three times daily. They authored the Siddur, an organized series of prayers. Amongst the prayers that they authored, the Amida, the standing prayer, is considered to be the holiest of all prayers next to the Shema Yisroel, which is written in the Torah. In fact, the Hebrew word tefillah, prayer, is used many times in referring to the Amida. You know, in our daily Amida, there are 13 personal request that we make. The first of those requests is Adam Das. You have bestowed on man knowledge. So we observe that the first of our personal request is for wisdom. The choice really was very logical since <clears throat> that which differentiates mankind from an animal is our intellect, the ability to communicate, to learn, and to grow. We see the same idea expressed with the morning blessings. The first of the 15 morning blessings is Hanosein Lasechvi Vino, that he who gives the rooster understanding, a request that God Almighty bless us with intellect, since without intellect, we as humans would not be able to survive. It is our intellectual abilities, our brains, that make us God's greatest creation. So we can view wisdom in many different ways. Some wisdom is the product of our experience and hard work, whereas there is another wisdom which is a gift from a benevolent Father in Heaven. It is His hope and desire that we succeed in all of our efforts. To that end, He has bestowed upon you a lifetime membership 
to the first wireless, spiritual, godly internet. You were born with a built-in computer, your godly soul. You were even given your own special password, one that is unique to you. It was given to you as a gift on the eighth day of your life, your Hebrew name. This password is so special that Rebbeir stated in the Talmud in Yuma, 83a, that when a parent names their child, they do so with divine inspiration, a message from God. Let us attempt to use all the talents that God Almighty has blessed us with to bring peace and joy to the world. Let us use our intellect to gain the wisdom necessary to connect to God Almighty, our loving Father in Heaven. He's waiting. Let us pray that he brings an end to all the hatred, wars, and suffering in the world. May his blessings extend to all our brethren in the land of Israel and to Jews all over the world. May he usher in the coming of Mashiach Sakana with the safe return of all the hostages, the healing of all the sick and injured, and the safe return of all of our soldiers. Quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you once again <clears throat> for listening. Again, we all need to keep Again, Israel in mind, uh, for the most part, in many, many ways, they stand alone. Again, I'm Yisrael Chai. Make sure that you add them to your prayers and to your pocket. And again, God should bless you with only good. And once again, thank you for listening. And again, I apologize for any inconvenience with my cold. And again, there will not be any musical rendition after of original song after this lecture. Thank you so much for attending. Once again, God bless. Be well. Shabbat Shalom.